All right then, gang. So in this series so far, we've covered these three bases, signing new users up, logging users out, and also logging users in. Now, typically in applications, we need to keep track of a user's authentication status. And by that, I mean, we need to keep track of whether a user is currently logged into the application or logged out because we're going to show different things depending on that authentication status, right? If they're logged out, we're not going to show these. If they're logged in, we will show these guides. So how do we keep track of a user's auth status? Well, we use a method called on auth state changed. So what that does is listen for any authentication status changes. When there is one, it's going to fire a function for us. And then we can do something dependent on that authentication change. So if they logged out, then we can hide these things. If they logged in, then we can show those things. OK, so let's set up this listener right now. So I'm going to do this at the top of the auth file. At the top, we'll do a comment that says listen for auth status changes. And below that, we're going to take the auth constant and use a method on that called on auth state changed. OK, so this takes a callback function and this callback function takes in a user as a parameter. I'll explain this in a second. Now, every time there's some kind of auth state change, every time we either log in or log out, then this function right here is going to fire because we've set up this listener. Every time there's a change, this function fires now. If the change was that the user has logged into the application, then we get that user back right here. So we can see the user that's logged in. Now, if the change is that a user has just logged out, then when this function fires, this user will be null. OK, because the user is now logged out. So we can check whether a user is logged in or logged out by checking this user right here. So let's just log that to the console. First of all, console.log user. Save that and head back over to the browser. And now when we first fire up the application, let me just delete this and refresh. When we first fire up, this fires, right? Because what happens is the authentication service fires up and it sees the first kind of initialization as a change. So is the user currently logged in? Well, in this case, they are because we see it right there when we first load up the application. OK, so we're firing this for the first time and we're logging that to the console and we see that user right here. And we can see that we're currently logged in as if we look at the email Mario at net ninja .uk. Cool. So we're keeping track of a user when they first land on the website. Now, if we were to log out, so I'm going to go to log out. Let me clear this console again. Log out. Now we can see that this is logged to the console. No. So this listened for that state change in authentication and it fired this function. But because we've logged out, the user is now null and we're logging null to the console. OK, so if we log back in or rather, let me get rid of those. I'm going to refresh. And again, when we first fire up the application, it's going to fire to begin with to see if we're currently logged in. And this time, because we're logged out, we're getting null to begin with. Right now, let's log in. So I'm going to say Mario at the net ninja code UK and it's test one, two, three, four. Log in. Now it fires the function again. We actually get it twice, but it fires the function and we can see that now this is the user. Now, the reason we get that twice is because we also log it out down here when we sign in. So let's get rid of this console.log. We don't need that anymore. We also don't want this console.log when a user signs up because we're going to track it up in this the logging in and the logging out. OK, so we don't need these console logs down here. And in fact, we don't need the then method on the sign out anymore because after sign out, we don't particularly want to do anything. We're going to track all of that up here whenever the authentication changes. OK, so if they sign out, we can track that here now. OK, then. So what we could do, because when a user signs out, this fires and this is null. And when a user signs in, this fires and this is the user. We can do a check in here every time there's some kind of state change in authentication to check whether that user exists or if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, it means the user's just logged in. If it doesn't exist, it means the user's just logged out. And we can do different things dependent on that, right? So let's do that check. We'll say if user and if they're logged in, this will exist. If they've just logged out, then it won't exist and it will be null. So this is only going to fire when a user has just logged in. So we'll say console.log. And we'll say user logged in. Colon and we'll output that user as well. 
that we get back. So this thing, right? Now then, if this is null, this won't fire. We'll do an else clause. And this will fire if a user has just logged out. So we'll console.log user logged out. Okay, cool. So let us fire this up now and test this out in a browser. Just added on my uh, semicolons. And now we can see that a user is logged in to begin with refresh. And yep, the user is still logged in. Now, if we log out, let's go to log out right there. We can now see that a user is logged out. If we refresh, again, the user is currently logged out. If we log in, then we'll say Mario at the net ninja.co.uk test one, two, three, four, we'll log in. And now we can see the user is logged in. So now my friends, we're keeping track of the authentication status of a user. And we always know now if a user is logged in or if a user is logged out. So that in the future, we can do different things in here dependent on that status. If they're logged in, we can show things that we want to show to a user here. If they're logged out, we can do something here, okay? So now we're keeping track of a user authentication status.